Absolute geezers, welcome to another episode of Football Is, and that is what I want, Tales of a Groundhopper. If you're new or old, do me a favour, have a look on the app if you're listening to this on Spotify, and leave us a review on there. You can rate the podcast up to five stars, so if you are enjoying it, leave that review, share this with a friend, and let's get this show out there. Now enough of that shameful plug, on with the show. Absolute geezers, welcome to another episode of Football Is, and that is what I want, Tales of a Groundhopper. Delighted uh, to be welcoming my next my next guest, and Andrew Hodgson. Really, really excited for this one, because you've tweeted me a few times, and uh, do you know what? You tweeted me in a vi- with a video uh, the once, Andrew, and, I, and it was about, uh, I've been to a ground, and I got a bit of a bit of hassle off uh, some, some people, and you tweeted, and I thought, I didn't see him at the game. <laughs> was he at the game? And then, and then, obviously, I got on and on and on. I never, I never had to reply to you. I'm really sorry about that. But welcome on the show, mate. Thank you for coming. No worries. On. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. No, spot on, mate. And just, just before we start off, tell me a bit about yourself, Andrew, and what you do. I'll call you Andy. Andy or Andrew? Which one? Andy, you want? please. Andy. Yeah, I'm the same. Me, whenever I hear, whenever I hear trouble. Daniel, I think I must be in trouble. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, my name's Andy. Um, I live in Stockton on Tees, um, which is in the northeast of England. Um, kind of Middlesbrough is our closest sort of football league side, but there's loads of like non league sides in the area. Um, uh, born in Darlington, grew up in Darlington, and lived there for 20 odd years. Um, um, and obviously, I'm a Darlington fan, got the shirt on tonight to rep the club. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I am actually in smoggy territory, but um, I'm still a Darlington fan and it will remain that way. <laughs> That's spot on, my friend. Spot on. I've, I've seen you do go to quite a few games, don't you? I've, I've looked, looked back at what you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite lucky, really, because I um, my job that I do um, does involve a bit of travelling. So rather than sitting in a hotel room all night, I'll go on the air. Uh, I still call it the ground up that, that it's, called, the, it's called the football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I can look on there, <laughs> see what's on, and uh, and do that. But uh, I think obviously with COVID, obviously the travelling's less and less. But it means that I'm at home and I can get to more of the local grounds because we're really lucky in the North East. There's, um, I mean, literally with the Northern League, which is sort of forty odd teams. Apart from Carlisle, which is a bit of an anomaly because that's obviously way over in the northwest. You've got. 30 odd 30 odd teams that are like an hour away from your house so it's great it's like a grand public dream really so yeah yeah people don't understand mate do they that there's like non-league clubs there there's just thousands i mean in the midlands we're blessed with christ almighty division after division after division and so they honestly I, I implore anyone to 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 come to the midlands and on any night of the week and say I dare them actually to say they can't find a game to go watch because it's 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 not true there's there's fo- yeah. there's football everywhere isn't there yeah, there is. Yeah, There's, you can always find something if you if you prepare to look. Uh, yeah, Definitely, you can go down far enough as well. Yeah, if you prepare <laughs> to do that. <laughs> Spot on. Now, actually, you sort of talking about doing your, your traveling for work wise there, so it tees up perfect. That does for the first question because what I'm going to ask you is, what's the furthest you've ever travelled for a football game? Um, yeah, I suppose this is cheating. I mean, I've not I've not done a game overseas. I mean, uh, that would be a plan, but. I suppose Northern Ireland is where I've seen a couple of games. So I've seen um, Banger, Banger play there just outside of Belfast. But the best one I did in uh, in Northern Ireland, which was actually in Belfast, with a team called Cliftonville. Um, it's uh, it's kind of what I think is a perfect ground, really. You've got two sort of modern stands, then a grass bank on one side, and then this really old stand from the 40s and 50s. Uh, which is probably going to get pulled down at any point. Um, so you know, if you've got the opportunity to go, go and see it. I believe the stand was used in the uh, Bert Trautmann film, who was the German uh, goalkeeper who broke his neck in the uh, FA Cup final for Man City in the fifties. And I think they used that stand in the film, um, wow. obviously because it's obviously a, a real throwback to the yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. bygone era. So yeah, uh, Belfast, but in this country, kind of under my own steam. Because uh, I was having to think about this, 
I remember as a 14 year old getting the Darlington supporters bus down to Colchester, which uh, is also, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like an eight o'clock start, and uh, obviously that was at the old ground at Lair Road, which was, um, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously looking back, it was, you know, at the time it probably looked very run down, but obviously the type of grounds that I've kind of grown up to love, really. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a little tiny away stand, um, you know, terrible view, um, you know, toilets through just a wall with a little gutter at the back. Um, no, yeah, but yeah, so yeah, Colchester would probably be the one in this country and then obviously Northern Ireland, but that's cheating a bit because I was over there work anyway, so. <laughs> jealous, mate, I'm jealous. There's that one ground in um, in, in Northern Ireland, is it Glen Torren? That's like the immense the the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's right next to Belfast City. So if you could find yourself a cheap flight, you could probably walk from the airport to it. So um, you know, something to bear in mind if you can get a cheap flight from from where. But yeah, it looks fantastic. But I think that's a ground that they're planning to redevelop. So again, it's kind of time to go and see it. Is go yeah. and see it soon. Yeah, but it does look amazing. Yeah. It's next to, I'm hoping I can convince the wife because it's right next to the Titanic's uh, museum. I yes, think. So yeah, I can, yeah, like, Titanic quarter, yeah. Two birds, one stone. You go that way, I'll go that way. Spot yeah, on, spot definitely. On. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with well, this one then, uh, this is a really important one for football grounds, uh, honestly. So so this this divides opinion. So pie, sausage roll or Neva? And if so, Neva, what instead? <laughs> Um, yeah, it's got to be pie for me. Um, exactly. Or, or, yeah, but 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 oh. it needs to have something with it. Like gravy would be a bonus. Mushy peas. Yeah, yeah. Mushy peas, you're laughing. And then if you can get some chips thrown in, absolutely fantastic. But yeah, pie every day. Don't mind a sausage roll from in Greg's, but a football ground has got to be. It's got to be pie. Yeah. I completely yeah. agree, mate. And there's like, um, there's a girl I follow on. Uh, sorry, a lady I follow on Twitter uh, called the Wayday Pie Girl, and she's she's infamous in non-league. She goes, she's at. I think she actually judges pies now. I'm pretty oh, sure she pie. judges pies because oh, of how, yeah. how yeah. she's how she's gone with it. But I must get her on. But um, it's got to be a pie, and it foot. Football, you yeah. think of football, cold, miserable day, pie in hand, bloody nice, nice, well, a coffee that scolds your lips before you've even touched the bloody thing. It's part of football, so I agree. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't. or Bovril, Bovril, yeah, yeah, Bovril, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, tell you what, yeah, you're, hard, cool. you're hard pressed to find Bovril now, aren't you? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it hard seems pressed. to be, um, it seems to be a thing of the thing of the past. Um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, Bov, uh, uh, yeah, it's got to be a pie. That's, um, I mean, I know people like programs and stuff like that. My thing is pin badges, I love pin badges, yeah. but then after that, it's, it's the pie. Um, Hashtag or, bring back Bovril. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> We're starting a movement, mate. We're starting a movement. Um, okay, so with this one, what I, what I want to know with this one is if you could play for any non league football club that you've been to watch, who would it be and why? I'm gonna to have to give a really boring answer here because I can't I can't see anyone but Darlington really. Nothing um, wrong with that. Nothing wrong just because obviously I, I did have a think if there was any other team, but you know, I think it's gotta be Darlington because they are a team. Um <laughs> growing up I was nowhere near good enough. <laughs> to, <laughs> could say barely, that like, come on. I now. could barely get a game from the Sunday League side, never mind. But yeah, I mean it would have to be Darlington just from being from the town and obviously um, you know, growing up there and everything and uh, yeah, yeah, obviously that would be the team I would like to play for. But 38, or nearly 39, I think the, uh, yeah, the ship sailed on that one, unfortunately. <laughs> I believe in you, Andy. I believe in you, mate. What position? What position, by the way? Oh, I was, I just got stuck full back. I think you always used to put the, put the bad players at full back. Although, full backs back then, you, you kind of, totally different to a full, I mean, a full back signing, but the thing, it's like wing backs and... They're the most, they're, they're, I find them probably one of the most important positions on the yeah, pitch. Yeah, you've got to be so fit the job they do. on the pitch, but I mean, you know, as a right, right as a kid, I mean, you know, you, you couldn't go over the halfway line as a right back. Things have <laughs> just changed so much, so yeah, yeah. Andy, I'm, I'm campaigning, mate. Right right back for, for Dark, mate. Honestly, I'm campaigning <laughs> for you, 1 million percent. Okay, so with regards to uh, to ground hopping, right, how do you spot another ground hopper at a ground? And this is a very good question because people have so many different answers for this. So I'm really excited for this one. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I'll do a bit of stalking. So I'll go on the Footballer app, I'll see who's checked into the ground. 
No one said that yet, Andy. That's, oh, that's really? bloody brilliant. Okay. No one's, that's, okay. the first, that's what I thought people would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Every time. So when check in, uh, obviously from a mate, we'll check in and we'll have a look and we'll see who's checked in. And, um, and then uh, there's been a couple of occasions where there's been people that I've met before. So Kizzy, who was on Twitter, he's been to a load of grounds, really, really good guy. And um, there's been times when I've noticed he's on there and I've kind of gone and found him. Um, but without the app, I think, I don't know, you can just kind of tell normally the people are kind of on their own normally. Um, I don't know, there's just something about, you can, and I don't mean this in a mean way because obviously people think brown poppers like anoraks and glasses. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no, no, I agree. But yeah. you can just, I don't know, you can just, you can just, I can just tell I must have a good radar. I agree, mate. I um, agree. With that. But Massive. yeah, the, the footballology app um, is, yeah, my first port of call. Yeah. Footballology, I love it. It's actually such a great app. It really oh, is. Um, I hope they listen to this program one day and and and, and sponsor the show because I always give you a shout out. Footballology, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but it is. It's so good because it, it, it you can literally put that app on on a Saturday morning and think, where am I going? Where's close to me? And it lists every game. I think down to step seven is it? Step seven, step step eight, possibly. I think it goes down to steps. I know P. It goes up to steps. It goes to step six, but. Um, yeah, I mean it's fantastic. I mean it is it's absolutely brilliant. It's a great app. It's a great it's idea. Great, yeah. Whoever yeah. come up with it, they should be knighted. Honestly, should be on the on yeah the list. When you look at all the games all over the world and everything, I mean it must be especially especially at the moment with kind of the way non leagues going with there's obviously a lot of COVID uh, call offs and stuff like that. But I mean up here, yeah, nine times out of ten they're pretty spot on. But I think. The good thing is, obviously, now the users can actually edit it and change things as well, which I think helps as well. Um, so, yeah, it's... Um, I, someone, again, another guy on Twitter, a really good guy, uh, Speedball, he's called, it's Speedball 24, he's a Norwich and Kings Lynn fan, Andy, he's Andy Howell, he's called, and he described uh, the football chap as, uh, as heroin for football fans. <laughs> Probably right, like, Probably it's right. Like, it's trying to find you, like you say, you look at it, look at the grounds, and you know. And I think for me, one of the worst things about it is um, when you're not at a game, you see all the people checking in at the different grounds. Yeah, Thank I can you. see nothing you in worse. Great. Nothing yeah. worse, mate. Your phone goes ting, ting, ting. You're like, oh. yeah, and you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm at, for reminding me. Yeah, that. <laughs> I'm at uh, Morrison's with the kids and the wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I shouldn't say that. But uh, no, no, yeah, no, um, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. but yeah, brilliant. Absolutely, yeah, best thing ever. Football job, it really is. They should definitely sponsor the show. <laughs> Shameless plug, but who knows? One day, maybe. Um, with regards to uh, pre-match pubs that you've you've been you've visited, what would you say the best pre-match pub you've ever visited is? Um, for me, I think grounds like St James's Park, which are right at Newcastle, not Exeter. Yeah. Obviously, right in the city centre, obviously, you've got a load of pubs around there that are really close to the ground, like the Strawberries, a really famous one. Um, but for me, I mean, for me, uh, if I'm totally honest, I don't do the whole drinking and go up for football. I will, have, like, for me, it's just, I like to enjoy the football and not yeah, be yeah. kind of impaired by sort of being half-baked. But um, the one that stuck out for me, it's a bit of a random one um, because... Uh, at first, when we tried to get in, they, they weren't having it. So we played Live Spartans a couple of years ago. Live Spartans, obviously, up in Northumberland, about 40, 40 miles from Darlington. Um, obviously, when they saw a Darlington shirt on, the were keen on us coming in. But obviously, we said, but we're not going to cause any trouble. And it was just like a, it was just like a, a really sort of right, obviously, right close to the ground, um, kind of really welcoming, cheap beer. You know, good crack, and that's all you can ask for, really, isn't yeah. it? Um, although I did see one on Twitter the other day, and I can't remember which club it was. Um, it was a um, basically like a brick pub with really high ceilings, and it looked like it looked like a chamber or something. I'll, I'll have to find out what it was. It looked at, it's a bit pointless, really, because I've said it, and I don't know which club it is. But yeah, for me, it would be live, but I'm probably not the best person to ask because I haven't been that many. <laughs> no, 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 it's spot on, mate. Spot on. The thing is, I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, I. I've been to a few, but I went to watch Queen of the South um, this year, and um, I got and there was a pub called the Hole in the Wah, 
brilliant proper <laughs> proper pub and um i loved it absolutely loved it because you go in there all the queens fans are in there the bloke who's behind the bar is i think it was his grandfather played for queens oh, wow. um and it's just a really good pub i was i was sat there and i thought oh christ this is a proper proper footballing pub i love it you know really nice people in there playlist on football's on in the background before you go on just love it so yeah, yeah but I mean, i'm the same with you mate a lot of the times so i'm not able to go for a pint before the game because i'm driving so yeah same it, um, yeah. it's a tough one isn't it, it is a tough yeah one. um okay name me a time uh a game that you've been to has made you emotional um again i had to have a good think about this because there's been a few but um i think the one that I remember the most, and it's probably the closest I've been to crying at a match, was when um, Darlington played Plymouth in the old Division 3 before they called it League 2 yep. um, playoff final at the old Wembley in 1996. Um, we basically had automatic promotion over grass last day of the season, away at Scunthorpe, which is my first ever Darlington away game. I remember my dad took me. Um, we blew it. We were 2 0 down at half time, got it back to 2 all, and ended up drawing 3 all. If we'd won that game, we'd have gone up automatically. So you go through the playoffs, uh, beat Hereford over two legs, obviously, your team not too far from yourself. Yeah, uh, and then we beat, we, beat, we beat them Plymouth twice in the league that season, and we just we just froze on the big stage, unfortunately. Just never got going. Oh, no. Lost one, lost one nil, like really crappy goal off a short corner. And I remember, like, stood in the stand in the old bucket seats at Wembley, which was obviously the lower tier. Um, Queen, we are the champions. And obviously, oh, see the Plymouth fans no. celebrating. And you know when you get that lump in your throat and you think, I'm going to go go here. I mean, I was only 13, so it probably would have been acceptable for me to start crying. But, um, yeah, that was, that, was, that was tough to take. And then... The same thing happened in 2000, Peterborough beat us in the playoff final. Uh, inexplicably moved to a Friday night because England were playing a friendly on Saturday. So obviously Peterborough, which is a couple of train stops from Darlington, they had like 40,000 fans, Darlington had 13, which wasn't bad for a Friday night. Um, but obviously I'd seen it all before, so it was kind of, oh. that, was, that, was, that wasn't as uh, it was tough to take. But yeah, the Plymouth one definitely. But then in terms of, Happy emotion. Um, a couple, really. I think there was one where I don't know if you're aware, but Darlington were basically demoted a load down a load of leagues. We were in the yeah. obviously conference, and then ended up going down to the Northern League Division One, which is like step five of the Northern yeah, League. Yeah. I remember it wasn't that long ago, was it? it wasn't yeah, 2012. So yeah, um, and then um, so we. Obviously, got promoted the first season, then obviously got no promotion. Then we got into, uh, I think you call it the Northern Premier Division, so step three, obviously, promotion into the Conference North. Um, go to Whitby on a Thursday night because the original game had been um, postponed. Um, we played like a run of like nine games in, I want to say, like 25 days. It was ridiculous. We were playing like Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday. And anyway, Playing Plymouth, um, basically win the game, we get promoted, um, and within I think half an hour we were six 0 up. What? Never seen it. Never seen anything like it. It was crazy. Like it, it was just, it was just fantastic. Um, when those think, games happen, yeah. And obviously, second half was an absolute ball fest. I mean, anyway, we ended up winning seven one. Um, but seeing them lift the trophy, I mean, as a Darling fan, I haven't really seen them lift that many trophies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah to, to, to go down there on a hot, sunny Thursday night and, and obviously see them get back to where we should have been because, you know, if we'd been relegated for the yeah. conference, we oh, sorry, National League would have gotten the National League not. So that was obviously, you know, happy emotion. And I think another one um, was the first game that I'd been to after lockdown, which was a game in May, which was just a, a Durham um, Challenge Cup final. You know, you have them all over the country, don't these yeah, local yeah, yeah. there. And it was just, it was just, I mean, it was Billingham, uh, Billingham Symphonia versus West Auckland. Uh, it, was, it was a neutral ground, it was Billingham Towns ground, which is another decent non league ground. But it was just, it was just nice to feel normal to be yeah, at a game. Sense of normality. And, you yeah. know, I mean, there was like nearly 500 people there. Um, which for the two teams involved was a really good crowd and it was just great to be back watching 
football and thinking, yeah, things feel like they're going back to yeah. normal. Now. And I hope, it, I just hope it stays that way because. Fingers crossed. Fingers yeah, crossed. fingers crossed. Yeah, right but, way, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, a rare of emotions there. Oh, so, I love it. Love it, yeah. mate. Love it. I mean, it's weird because with me, um, the, the first time I ever cried at a game was, um, was, <laughs> it was France 98 when Beckham, because Beckham was my hero growing up. And when he got sent off, I was. I, I'd like to point out I was only. I was only eleven at the time, so I wasn't. I wasn't twenty five, um, and I bawled my eyes out because you know my hero had just been sent off. I was absolutely devastated. Then the time after that was a really weird one. It was. Um, it was against Roma for United when Alan Smith had been out for so long with injuries, and he'd come back and he scored against Roma and made it one 0 Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why, but I just because I knew how how hard it had been for him, and I just. I found myself. I wasn't balling, but I was just. I got all choked up by it because he run off. He run off. You know, screaming and celebrating. And I thought, Christ, you can just. Footballers sometimes are a bit like robots. I find nowadays that the, the, the emotions yeah. starting to go. And but seeing this guy battle back, it was just. It's weird, isn't it? How football gets you like that? Yeah, yeah. There's no. I mean, it's the best sport in the world, isn't it? It oh, really is. Honestly. Yeah, the emotions and the things that you see. It's just, and like you say, imagine not like imagine not liking football. <laughs> I say this all the time, mate. Honestly, and, and you know, I mean, there's probably people out there say, "Well, it's quite easy," but I, I always liken it to this, right? You can go to any pub in, in the world and find another football fan and talk about, a, and you will have a common a common ground with football. You couldn't walk into a into a pub and talk to someone about tennis. You couldn't walk in and say, "Oh, you know, <laughs> Murray's just had a five set." It would, it's not the same. It would be a very yeah, it's all that yeah, yeah, brilliant. With football, you can start on one subject. You can be talking about Darlington. I guarantee by the end of that conversation, you've spoken about bloody Neymar or Messi. I they're ruining it. You know, you can just it just yeah. There's yeah. just it's just brilliant. There's so yeah. much you can talk of, so much very it's, it's funny you should say that because I was at a game once at Wingate Finchley, which is uh ground in London, brilliant ground by the way, art deco stand. And you know, when you're like you stood there on your own, you hear people talking, and there was actually a guy who um had lived down in London for 20 odd years and he was from Darlington and he actually worked as I mean he was a lot older than me but he actually worked in like what was the pub was where I close to grow up yeah. and it was just totally random but that you know it happens doesn't it you, like you it say it does. Um, yeah it's great the people you bump into and everyone just wants to talk football don't they and without uh, time, mate, without yeah it's good it's it, yeah it's great it's great fun and that's what you know what actually Twitter Twitter can can get a, a bit of a bum rap a lot of the time because there are some vulgar people on there. But yeah. the ground hop inside of it, you can go on Twitter if you haven't got the footballer app. Say you say that's not working, you can go on Twitter and say, "I'm off to to so and so this week." Anybody else watching? And you will get someone that'll go, "Oh, I'm on yeah. the way there." You know, and it's people you've never met before that you will. It, it's just honestly, it's like lonely hearts for football. <laughs> yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> With regards to um, okay, so next one is um, with regards to football uh, again. Uh, you know, f- reliving moments and, and thinking about about emotions. Um, if you could relive the last five minutes of a game you've been to, what would it be and why? Um, yeah, this is the game that um, yeah that I was speaking to my friend about earlier, and he said the same thing. So um, two two years ago, so November nineteenth, just over two years ago, we drew Walsall. Um, in the FA Cup, down in June, Walsh in the FA Cup at the best got on, whatever they call it now, be sponsored by somebody. But yeah, yeah. yeah drew them in the Cup. Um, you know, it was a really good draw for us because it was a football league side. First time we played a football league side in a long, long time. Um, or she go down to there, fill the away fan, uh, waste time down the goal, 2,000 fans. Um, um, on, 85, on 85 minutes, we were actually 1 0 up. Fast forward five minutes, we're two one down, and we've had a man sent off. Now they had a man sent off earlier in the game, but obviously, yeah, we'd been comfortable for the whole game, and then our goalkeeper at the time, Liam Connell, who was on loan from a low league side, but he'd been brilliant in the previous rounds. He basically got us to the first round with some of his performances. He just had an absolute nightmare and let two really poor goals in. Um, but obviously that. that that's not why the five minutes. I was going to say you'd be a bloody glutton for punishment if that yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> but um, basically, last kick of the game, we get a free kick out wide. Um, Sergi Baskin, bless him, um, he passed away a couple of weeks ago. Um, Bermudan lad, um, he puts a, a free kick in, which if you get a chance to watch it, you make your own mind up. He said he meant it, but 
he, 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 he looks like he's going to cross it in, obviously looking for something to head it, but he plays it along the floor, catches everyone out, Joel Wheatley, back stick, 97th minute, sticks it in right in front of the away fans, there's fans on the pitch, and I mean, if you could bottle that feeling, ah, oh, yeah, it was just, it was amazing, and I think when you come up the ground, you're like, that's the best, the best thing awesome. ever, and I think people are saying, oh, you know, there's other games, but I think when I'd settled on it and kind of thought about it and still think about it now, just, it was just the best feeling in the world. I, I love that though, Andy, because, you know, so often people can can sort of, uh, bloody, it looks like I'm trying to come into the screen now, don't I? Um, <laughs> people can so often say the, the usual, oh, you know, last minute winner, it was, uh, but to have that, I, sometimes I feel like the equaliser is, is, is almost, more isn't it because yeah. especially you know you're flat aren't you you're flat you're, you're down you're down a goal in your in your case a man is sent off keepers made two howlers the whole you're just flat and you're trying to get behind the team trying to trying to as the crowd does so often trying to carry the team over just trying to get them there and the big just just that just that moment when it oh god you can't it beat it amazing. You can't, yeah. I try and explain it to the wife and she yeah. just, oh, I don't understand why you get so emotional so passionate and I'm like Oh my god! I wish I could explain it. It's just a feeling, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was great. And I, I know there was some fan footage from behind the goal. Uh, another, another good ground hopper, good lad, Andy Clark. He, he put it on. I think it got like got like quarter of a million views in like a week. It just went ridiculous. You know, obviously where the where the, where the phones pointing up at the seat at the top of the stand. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was great. And obviously, it meant for us we got a replay. Uh, back at Blackwell Meadows the game was on BT so we got money from that yeah. um, but as replays normally are we just never got going and like lost 1-0 we're like, we're but, like, like you said the money though the money isn't it I mean that's the money crazy. yeah and the exposure because like I say um, you know I feel though our demise hasn't has been well followed by the media of some other clubs like say Berry for example I mean I'm not having to go those clubs but I think we as a football league club for many many years we felt we did kind of kind of slip under the radar a little bit yeah, so it's nice to get a bit of recognition obviously seeing our manager Alan Armstrong he was on like the match of the day um, doing the interviews and stuff like that so it got us a bit of exposure but yeah it was um, a great a great day and um, yeah yeah still smart about travel back now. Makes that travel back a lot, a lot, lot happier, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it was just yeah, it was a ha hazy travel back. Let's put it that way. Yes, yeah. <laughs> spot on, spot on. <laughs> okay, so right, I'm asking you now, Andy, to create me a pre-match playlist for a football game, and I want you to choose three songs and tell me why you've chosen. Okay, again, I had to have a real good think about this because I wanted to. So for me, um, the reason why I picked the or a few of these songs is because for me. I don't want to go back about the good old days, but for me, football was the best in the in the mid to late nineties. I just yeah, yeah. great. So my songs kind of reflect that. So the first song I picked, it's by the same band, but I couldn't decide which one. So I'm sorry, I picked four. No so um, obviously, Manic Street Preachers, Time for Life. That would be one because it's just it's an anthem. Andy, that that song, I watched them um, on a TV program. Uh, well, it was it was when they were actually it, it was the, the Basically, it was the version of it they did at Glastonbury, and it's just that bit in the middle, and they, all the violinists in the background. Nah, 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 nah. Oh yeah. my god! Get, I get goosebumps thinking about it now. It's one of my favourite songs. Great first, yeah. great yeah, first song. Design for life. I also um, caveat that of Australia by the Main Street Preachers. And the reason why I picked Australia, I don't know if you remember, there used to be a, a football league highlights program on ITV called Ensley Extra. Which yeah, yeah, was the yeah, old yeah. Sponsor. And Australia was the uh, basically the, the the credit music can obviously back then, you know, that was your uh, Sky didn't even show the football league goals at that point. So that was kind of your only way you could see yeah, the yeah, goals. Yeah. And um, it was on at like a ridiculous time, like one o'clock in the morning. So you have to set remember the video plus? Yeah, mate. The video plus for it. <laughs> Definitely do, mate. Definitely. So they, those two songs just kind of um remind me of, of that time really. Um the other song I picked um is um I don't might not have heard it. it's called Yes by McCalman and uh Vernon Butler. Um, it's a really good song. Um, again, another nineties one. Burn Butler used to be the guitarist in Suede. Check it out. I think you, I think you like it. I have a listen to that. Have a listen to that. Um, again, that one. Um, 
you know, like when you, I, I remember I was travelling down on the train to Wembley to go and see the non-league final um, a few years ago because our local team, Stockton Town, were in the Vars final. Uh, okay. I stuck around for the trophy final as well. And I just remember going down the train, sun shining, that song came on on my phone and I was just like, yeah, this is this is great. I'm going to Wembley, sun shining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just great. Um, the other song that I picked is more of a modern one. Um, it's a song called Pal Driver Waltz by the Arctic Monkeys. It's a bit of a dreamy one, but I think it just kind of evokes memories of like walking down like a, a grey street in Yorkshire somewhere. You see the lights on the ground, or you're walking away from the ground after you know you've lost. Um, so if you haven't heard those, I would check them out because I think you would like them. Um, so yeah, I've got a bit obscure. I do apologise. Nothing wrong with hoping, that, mate. Nothing wrong with that. Over there, have heard them, but yeah, um, uh, yeah, Manix Oasis. This- you know, honestly, mate, I bands just bands like that. It's just it's nineties football. Just yeah, love it. Manic Street Preachers, mate. Honestly, that that uh, design for life. Oh, honestly, I'm already thinking in my head. I'm gonna play that later as I'm editing. I absolutely yeah. love that song. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, just it's just epic. It's such an epic song. Um, okay, next question, and this is an interesting one because for me, uh, well, I'll, I'll I'll let you. I'll give. I'll get your answer first, and I'll then I'll give you mine. Okay. So, is non-league football on the up? Yes, absolutely, 100%. I mean, for me, um, you just have to look at the attendances. Yeah. I mean, at the Northern League, which is obviously in step five and step six up here, um, I mean, there's teams in the first division that are regularly getting five, six hundred. Um, and then I noticed there was a cup game last night to Tancaster Albion's ground, and there was a team from step 11 playing a team from step 14. And there was like over 200 people there. I mean, that is oh, just... Yeah. I don't, for me, if I'm being honest, I'm just totally turned off to like top flight football now. Um, I still like to do the 92 uh, grounds where I can, but I just come away like feeling a bit like, I don't know, just not really fulfilled really. Whereas non league, I think, you know, you can rock up to the game, literally get parked dead close, you know. You can probably get into the game, get a pint, get a pie and a badge for like 15 quid, yeah. sometimes less. And I, I think it's on the up because I think I think people, I, I, yeah. you know, every time I switch match the day on or BBC football, it's always VAR's done this, VAR's done yeah. that, VAR's ruined the game. Yeah. And I just think like non-league, it's kind of like, you know, you've got full-blooded tackles, um, you know, good, honest players who don't roll around or try yeah. and cheat. And, you know, I think, you know, there will be people look down on the league, but I, I just, oh. say, just say, like, give it a chance because I think Definitely. it's 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 literally it, and this irritates me is I I sp- people I speak to and you know even now and I'll say to them um, they'll say what you're up to and I'll say oh, I'm off to watch you know I'm off to watch um, Wolverhampton Casuals for example I'm off to watch yeah. Wolverhampton Casuals play Bilston and they go. Pfft. You know, why would you want to do that? It's just yeah. picking lumps out of each other, long ball merchants. And I'm like, well, there you go. You're an idiot because you, you, yeah. you've made an assumption on something that people have been thinking for 20, 30, 40, 50 years when it isn't the case. Non-league football, the standard of football is decent, isn't it? There is decent football. Yeah, yeah. And lads now, I mean, the players now are like, I mean, yeah, you get the, you get the odd one, but the, 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 the fit lads, you know. They are. You know, um, and... You know, you still get all shapes and sizes, but I think, and that's what I love about non-league. You know, you do get you do get those still as well. But you know, the fit lads, and I think, um, I think you're right. I think team do teams do try and play out from the back. If you get a chance to watch it, uh, Harrogate Railway scored a goal on the weekend, um, and literally they played out from the back all the way up and scored, and it was just like unbelievable. I mean, it was like watching a Man City goal. It was. And if it's Barcelona, it's played and played and played. Yeah, and played. yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, what do you think, Dan? Do you think the league's on the up? Massive, right? massively, mate, massively. And I think actually, I actually think COVID, whereas it's been a, a major negative for, for 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 some non-league football clubs, I actually think the second that you were the second they stopped all the big teams, you you being allowed to go see the big teams as much, I kind of feel like they opened the floodgates for people to go. Oh, hang on, there's there's local football. And I do, I do feel like the Premier League as well, with 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 the way that they're they're run, you know, the, the the big the big clubs. I kind of feel like they are starting to drive football fans away from watching them, and I actually feel like there's a younger generation starting to take an interest in this. 
And I think that's what non-league football has been missing, hasn't it? That, that younger generation coming with their mates and going to watch. And also, actually, I big up each and every one of you guys, all you ground hoppers, because what you guys do is you promote non-league football. Where, be it wherever you go, as soon as you tweet tagging that, that team in, I'm off to so-and-so to see so-and-so play. You know, I'm off to Dudley Town to watch Dudley Town against, you know, Wensfield. When, you, when you're tweeting these, it's, it's, it's awareness and people are going, oh, I've never heard of that club. Oh, this looks good. It just it's just raising awareness. I think every one of you ground hoppers are doing just doing an amazing job to because without meaning to, I don't think any anyone goes to mean to do it. You're promoting non league yeah. football and you're promoting foot, you know, the, these clubs. And like like I said, like I alluded to before, people's idea of non league football is it's just hit and hope, no tactics. You've got a big bloke at the at the, at the up top. You've got a fat guy in, at the back. Uh, and it's it's just simply not the case. I've seen some footballers uh, in non-league that I honestly watch them and I think they could do a job so far up the up the, the pyramid. It really could, yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah. A, yeah, same for me. There's a few players I've seen over the years who, who, who stand out, stand up players and um, like players that would get you off your seat if you were sat yeah. on the seat at a non-league ground. That's the other thing I like about non-league, you can basically do a two of the, you know, most grounds that you do it, you can stand at one end or move around and it's great. And I think it's just, I think, like, again, I, I don't want to slag the Premier League off because it, it's got into place, but I think it's so far removed from what it used to be. Like, players are like superstars. and You're a number. Just, You're yeah, number. I think, I just think, you know, there's not that connection anymore, whereas I think the non-league, um, the clubs are really appreciative of, of your support. Completely, Andy. Uh, the thing for me is, and I don't know if you've had this. If if some clubs you go to, if you speak to someone who is involved with the club, and they say, "Oh, you know, all right, where are you come from?" and you say, "Oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I've come from so and so. Just watch it." They thank you. They thank you for yeah. coming to watch. Whereas, yeah. I've been to I've been to loads of Premier League clubs. I'm, I'm not expecting you know the chairman to come <laughs> and say thank you so much, but there's nothing. It's so disconnected. It you is. are literally a number walking through that turnstile. Line in the pockets, non-league football. They absolutely adore the fact that you're that you're there. And and I say this until I'm blue in the face as well. Every bit of money you spend, you know it's going to support that club. And without non-league football, without grassroots football, the big clubs don't exist because it all starts from 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 the bottom up, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I just love like the the prize draws they have when it's like. <laughs> yeah. Trying to be for yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. three three cans of Fosters, which was originally a four pack. I just, I just, I love the quirks of it, and like you say, all that money goes to the club, and uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> every I feel, sorry, I feel sorry for people who haven't sampled it because honestly, I think, mate, I think every, people are missing out. Every non-league club as well, like in sort of like from step sort of five down, they've always got that one bloke or one lady at the club that does everything. Yeah. Serves, yeah. serves coffees at half time, sells tickets at the start, you know, yeah, programs. Yeah. And these people, they're the proper football people. You know, you can yeah. take your bloody glaziers and your bloody, you know, take all of them out of it. They're not football people. They're not people that love the game. Whereas you've got, you know, Mandy Smith, who, who, who gives up her Saturdays to come and make sure everything... Oh, I just... Oh, I'll say it again. Imagine not loving football. Imagine exactly. it. Without these yeah. characters, it's nothing. Absolutely yeah, nothing. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think we're all agreed on that. We, yeah, definitely. Others. One definitely. million percent. Yeah. So, yeah. so the last question, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one, because when I've asked this people before, it's put them on the spot and they go, oh, ah, crap. Um, describe to me ground hopping in three words. Okay. Called... <laughs> not wrong there mate not wrong the there majority of the time it's called um unpredictable oh without a doubt without a doubt um i mean and that's just in so many ways you know you, you don't know what you're going to get with some of the grounds you don't know what's going to happen at some of the grounds yeah i mean i've seen floodlights go down before kickoff from one of the players your office electrician has gone to Got fixed the front line. <laughs> I mean, you, you couldn't it, imagine Cristiano it. Ronaldo jumping into the signal exactly. box quickly saying, "Hang on, exactly. lads, I got this. Get me my Phillips." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think I think the last one is exciting. Yeah. Um, because you know, I think for me, ground hopping, and as much as I go, you know, obviously you love watching my team, but I think when you go and watch a game as a neutral, you just enjoy the occasion. Yeah. Definitely. Enjoy. I mean. Not non-league, but I was at Cheltenham a few weeks ago, um, 
and they played Cambridge United and Cambridge United beat 5 0 at home. And I took a bit of a statistic kind of pleasure in, in being the Cheltenham fans and just seeing it. I've got nothing against Cheltenham, but just seeing them get really wound up as a neutral, <laughs> I quite enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, but those three definitely, I think, yeah, um, yeah, I just, I just love it. It's I agree, cool. I agree, and uh, and actually, that I ask this because no, no two answers are the same, and and everyone brings a different, uh, a different answer. So I, I absolutely love. Uh, the ones you come up with, cold, definitely. Cold, without a doubt. Christ, there's yeah. nothing worse than standing in the middle of January, getting absolutely battered by the wind. You're there, trying, you're like freezing, but you're still there thinking, this is just yeah. amazing. Yeah. Well, I remember a few years ago when we had the Beast from the East, which was, I think, 2018, on, I want to say, where that really bad snow. And I remember I was working down in Worcester and um, the team that was playing, um, oh God, I can't remember, you might need to edit this, but I don't tell while I remember what they're called. Uh, oh, it's a team, let me find it. Two seconds, Dan, because this is a good story, this. Um, Not Worcester Raiders. No, they're near Kitty Minster, and they play, in, they play in yellow and black. Let me check my ground up, uh, up and see what the yellow game was. Starport, no, not Starport. Starport Swifts, they're, they're yellow and black. Oh yeah, Stalport Swifts. Yeah, they've got like the, got, like, the horse on the badge. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. Anyway, so it was free. I mean, it was obviously you remember it, the snow was absolutely crazy, and um, looked at the football jack and said the game the game was on. So obviously, the great thing about Twitter contact them said yeah the game's on. There was snow on the pitch. They didn't play with an orange ball, unfortunately, they played with a yellow one. They'd obviously they were still on the pitch and they marked the lines out. The game went ahead. Um, and I'll always remember this. It was quite, quite funny. I follow on Twitter. I think the keeper was called Paul Hathaway or Paul Hadaway. He was the goalkeeper for Coles Hill. The game was one all, and the goalkeeper goes up for a corner at the end because they're trying to get the three points. I've never seen anything like it. Um, but... I remember when the game finished and they got on cards minus six. That's horrendous, that is. Uh, fair but play. It, play. But it was a great it was a great it was a great tip to do. The, the match was it was freezing cold, and you know what? It was a good game and the players gave a good account of themselves because it was so cold. Have you ever seen the goalkeeper score? No, have you? No, no, I'm no, sorry. No, no, I'm no, I'm, I'm no, never, never. I mean, I don't know whether I'll ever will, but yeah, that would we be we should have a we should have a bit of a wager, mate. Whoever whoever sees a goalkeeper score first, the other one has to buy a curry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue on by just think, yeah, yeah. Never seen one, and I, I've never. I don't think I've ever seen anyone come close, really. But yeah, um, I would love to see one score. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I thought, I've only ever seen a goalkeeper a game I've gone to got once, really, sort of non league wise. And I remember watching him going up, and I was like, oh, this is the moment. I just went yeah. straight for him, and when I and I was like, oh, bloody hell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, it's it, yeah. You, you you look. I wonder what the chances are. Have you actually seen the keeper score at a game? Not very high, but yeah, yeah, I would love to though. <laughs> we can but dream, mate. We can but dream. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Andy, I've absolutely loved this, mate. Honestly, absolutely loved having you on. It's uh, it's great. It's so refreshing to have a, a football chat with someone who uh, like he loves it as much as I do. And I, I think it, it comes out people who are listening uh, will definitely uh, agree that you're you're a, you're a fan of of the ground hopping app as well, which is brilliant. Yes, um, definitely, definitely. Before you go, mate, where can people find you? Um, yeah, I'm on Twitter um, as Andy Andy Hodge, and I've also got an Instagram account which um, is a ground hopping account and a guitar account. It's called Football and Fretboards. Um, Dan, will, I'm sure, will share it with me because I've some followers on there. Don't worry, so it will be all in football, there. Football and music, so you can find me on there. Um, and yeah, I hope one day, um, yeah, and if you see me at ground anywhere, come up and say hi. And thanks for having me on, Dan. I think your podcast is brilliant. It really, I think, brings across the passion of, of ground hopping. You're clearly passionate as well. And uh, yeah, just keep doing what you're doing, mate. Thank That's you, mate. Brilliant. I appreciate that. That was nearly the third time in football I've cried then. <laughs> 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 no, thank you so much. Um, guys, as I said, the links will be in the description. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify, they'll be in the description for there. If it's on YouTube, I'll post a link as well. Make sure you give uh, Andy a follow. He has got a YouTube channel that he's being very modest about, which I'll put the link in for that as well for his guitar work there. But um, as always, I'll say this to everybody. Make sure if you if you are not a groundhopper, if you've just stumbled across this, if you've not 
not got not got a non league club you go and watch. Give it a go. I promise you now, you will not think, you will not you will not regret it. Um, it is like a bug. Once you've been bitten by that ground hopping uh, bug, you cannot stop it. Uh, well, thank you very much, Andy. Really appreciate it, mate. And uh, to everyone out there, as always, I'll say it until I'm blue in the face. Be thinkers, not stinkers. Sayonara, au revoir. <laughs>